This is Carnival Celebration. I just got off a seven day cruise aboard where I went literally all over the ship, ate in nearly every restaurant, and did practically everything that you can do aboard. I even had the chance to visit some spots that passengers never get to go that you are going to want to see to believe. My thoughts on celebration? I have one word to describe it, ridiculous. So what exactly is it that makes this ship so wild? I've got all the details and my honest review, including both the good and the bad right now. Before I dive in, in the interest of full transparency, I do have to let you know that Carnival invited me on the ship for this sailing at no charge. That said, I'm giving you my honest opinions about the experience. Now, Carnival Celebration is the second ship in the Excel class from the cruise line. And if you've sailed its sister ship Mardi Gras, then you'll find that there is a lot that's similar. If you haven't sailed that ship yet, then you aren't going to believe Celebration. Put simply, I have never seen a Carnival ship that packs this much on board. First and foremost, Celebration is big. At 180,000 gross tons, it's about 35% larger than the previous Vista class. But having sailed a number of different Carnival ships across classes, I've noticed that no matter the size of the ship, there are usually lots of open spaces, whether it be a big open atrium or on the pool decks. Even on a ship with thousands of people, you could find wide open empty spots with hardly anyone around. That is not the case here. There is a ridiculous amount of restaurants, bars, pools, and other amenities and activities on this ship. No space is wasted. And as you can imagine, with so much more space and the need to fill it, there is a lot that's only found on this class of ship. So those favorites that you have across the fleet, like Alchemy Bar or Guy's Burger Joint, they are also on celebration. But then there is so much more. Let's start with the outdoor decks. You have the main pool area with the pool and the two-story Red Frog Tiki Bar. But then you also have the largest Serenity deck that I've ever seen. Then there are other pools at the back of the ship on both deck 16 and deck 8. These are all open to everyone. For more private spots, Celebration has Loft 19 at the very top of the ship with access for suite guests, where you can pay a hefty $500 a day to rent a private cabana. There's also a private Loft 19 pool. And Havana cabins also make an appearance with their own private pool that I actually thought offered the best views of any pool on the ship. Want something more active? The water park on Celebration is the largest that I've seen on Carnival, complete with three slides that I can tell you personally are all a lot of fun to ride. There's the ropes course, as well as a mini golf course, and a full-size enclosed basketball court. And yes, the Bolt roller coaster also makes an appearance on the ship. Head indoors and you get the same sort of carnival on steroids vibe. First, there are two main theaters. The first is the Grand Spectrum, which sits at the front of the ship. This is your typical theater with a stage and rows and rows of seats. But then there is the center stage at Celebration Central. Instead of an atrium, there's a three-deck stage here on Celebration that looks out the side of the ship. When it's showtime, display panels drop down, providing a visually stunning backdrop. If you want to gamble, check out the Empress Casino. It's absolutely massive with any game that you can think of. During my cruise, it was always busy and honestly pretty smoky as well. Then there are the bars like the Golden Jubilee. This spot pays homage to Carnival's 50 years of history, complete with features that are recreated or actually part of past Carnival ships, including brass doors that were once the entrance to the Mardi Gras nightclub on Carnival. Just outside is the original Telegraph from Carnival. Latitudes is another addition with drinks from all over the world and a travel theme complete with one of those flipboard signs like you see at an old train station that displays changing messages. Other bars include Bar 820 in the Miami-themed 820 Biscayne neighborhood, the Watering Hole, Tropical Bar, and trust me, a lot more. Then there is the food. Put plainly, I've never seen as many options to eat as I had on this cruise. 
And the great part is that most of the options are included with your fare. On a seven day cruise, I ate at the same spot only a couple of times. So of course you have the main dining room and the buffet and staples like Blue Iguana, Guy's Burger Joint, Guy's Pig and Anchor and Cucina del Capitano are also there on the ship, but there is a ton that's new. Here, Emerald's Bistro 1397 is available, serving up New Orleans style food for a small upcharge. There's the Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse, Bonsai Sushi, and Rudy's Sea Grill that do cost extra as well. But then the food that's included with your cruise offers a lot of variety. Shebang, which serves both Mexican and Asian food in one location, is free for lunch and dinner. The Italian restaurant Cucina, which I've always seen for a charge for dinner on other ships, it's available for free all day if you want Italian. Guy's Pig and Anchor is also free for dinner, which is a chain from the past carnival ships that I've sailed. There's a spot for salads up on the Serenity Deck, Street Eats out by the main pool, and Big Chicken, which serves chicken sandwiches, is also new to this class of ships. There's also Miami Slice if you want some pizza, and the Deco Deli if you want a sandwich. Yeah, I think that you are getting the idea. There's a ridiculous amount of things to do, see, and eat on this ship. So what was it like to actually sail? So my week-long cruise left Miami, followed by stops in Cozumel, Costa Maya, and Mahogany Bay in Roatan. This trip was definitely one of the most memorable and, frankly, the busiest that I've ever taken. There was a Jeep drive and a beach day in Cozumel, exploring Mahawal in Costa Maya, and a day on a catamaran with snorkeling in Roatan. But let's focus on celebration, what life was like on the ship. We can start with the first day at sea when Carnival arranged a tour to two spots I've never been on any cruise ship in my life. The first was the bridge of Carnival Celebration. Here, we were able to see what's essentially the brain of the ship. And what's interesting is not just the view, which frankly is unparalleled anywhere else on board, or to see the controls that they use to navigate the ship. But what surprised me were the data feeds on board. From the bridge, there are massive display panels that show alarms and sensors of everything around the ship. There are also live feeds of the cameras all around the vessel. The crew can monitor anything around the ship from right here. The second part of the tour was an environmental tour starting in the ship's engine control room down on deck three. While we are cruising along at sea going about 15 knots, that's about 17 to 18 miles an hour, Celebration is operating on just two of her four engines, and the crew can see exactly how fast each propeller turns, data on the bow thrusters, any alarms on the ship, and more. From there, we headed down to the recycling plant on the ship, where recyclable material is sorted, compacted, and processed. It's down another set of stairs when I notice that the stairwell marker is designated as Deck Zero. This is the literal bottom of the ship in a place that no passenger normally gets to see. But perhaps the highlight is through the black and yellow watertight doors where we all have to put on earplugs due to the noise. There, two of the ship's massive engines, powered by cleaner burning LNG, are humming along as we push toward Mexico. It was loud, hot, and unbelievably fascinating to see this part of the ship. Of course, most people won't see these spots, so what about the normal parts of Celebration? Let's talk about the entertainment. Carnival, with the two theaters, has put a big emphasis on new programming. Family Feud Live is a 100% legit rendition of Family Feud, where passengers form the teams and compete to win cruise cash for the trip. The theater was packed when I watched. Color My World, as you might guess, is a show all about color. It's performances of songs focused on colors like Paint It Black and Purple Rain and Yellow by Coldplay, but it's all given a twist compared to the originals. Then there is a new element with the large video screens at the back of the stage that serves as the set background. Compared to traditional stage sets, the technology really adds another level to the performance. But the show that you have to see is called The Most Magnificent Circus. It's themed as an old-time eclectic circus. Hanging from the ceiling in Celebration Central 
are several cables with fixtures attached to each of them. During the show, performers climb on these items as they rise three decks into the air. From there, they perform all sorts of acrobatics and contortions. They spin and, and frankly, so much more. Meanwhile, the video background screen offers even more visuals while other performers move through the crowd and on stage. There can be so much going on that you literally don't know which area to watch at any one moment. Other activities around the ship? Despite being an adult, I loved the water slides on the pool deck at the back of Celebration. There are three of them along with some kitty slides. The orange slide especially was a lot of fun. It's one of those drop slides where the floor falls out and sends you plunging down the tube. Unfortunately, due to it being too windy, I wasn't able to ride the Bolt roller coaster, which was a big draw, but I had saved it until we headed back to Miami. The moral of the story, if you know that you want to ride, then take advantage as soon as you can, just in case the weather doesn't cooperate. The Serenity deck is also huge and a great place to lounge away from the louder and busier main pool. And I spent some time here, but I do have to give special love to Loft 19. I was given access to check it out and it's like a world away from the rest of Celebration. It's much quieter with loungers if you don't want to rent a cabana and a private plunge pool that overlooks the Serenity area a deck below. And food? During a week-long cruise, I think I ate at the same spot just a couple of times. There are just that many options. I do have to give special mention to two restaurants. First is Emerald's Bistro. I had a shrimp po' boy here that I could eat every day for the rest of my life and be the happiest guy on the planet. I'm also a fan of big chicken, though it is a little heavy to eat every day. Still, while it may not be fine dining, they offered up chicken sandwiches that were toe to toe with anything that you get on land. But to be honest, the food was universally good from the steakhouse down to Guy's Burger Joint. The only thing that I ate for the week that I didn't think was good was Guy's Pig and Anchor during lunch when it's more of a buffet style. So I would say to skip that. But I went back later in the trip for dinner service and it was like night and day. If you go, be sure to pay the extra $5 for the backyard brownie it was the best dessert I ate the entire trip. As you can tell, I had a lot of fun aboard Carnival Celebration and feel like there's a lot that I'm not even mentioning. I'd say it took me until about day four before I had a handle on just everything that's offered. There is that much going on. The ship is just ridiculous, especially compared to older ships in Carnival's fleet. But I told you that this was an honest review and I've got to say, honestly, not everything was perfect. Let's talk about the size of the ship. According to the data during our bridge tour, Celebration had about 5,300 passengers on board during this cruise. And I 100% believe it. This ship, it feels busy. It feels crowded. And part of that isn't just the number of people on the ship, but also the ship's design. Take the elevators, for instance. Carnival seems to have opted for smaller elevators, but more of them. Either way, they are slow to arrive, and when you do get on one, it's much more cramped than usual. Around the ship, there are choke points, like on the main pool deck. Here, because of all the people and the furniture, which adds to it, just feels more crowded, even when it's not that busy. This seemed to be a consistent theme around the ship, I found. The center stage theater in the middle of the ship is another good example. The stage with the video boards. It is phenomenal and unique. It's cool to walk by and see a show going on. But seating is a major issue. Since it's not set up like a normal theater, there just aren't a ton of spots to sit down and still see the stage. When I watched the circus show that I mentioned, I showed up 20 minutes early and there wasn't a seat to be found. Instead, I watched from the extreme left of the stage and just stood the entire time. In fact, they actually put on the show twice a night for two nights to be able to accommodate everyone. And even the cabin bathroom felt like the smallest that honestly I've ever seen on a cruise ship, while the cabin itself did feel slightly narrower as well, though it didn't exactly bring a tape measure. So when you are ready to sail, be prepared for a little less elbow room. For some people, these are major concerns. For me, apart from not being able to find a seat to watch the show, which was a pain, they're just a trade-off for having so much more going on around the ship. So if you've sailed Carnival 
but you haven't sailed ships like Celebration or Mardi Gras, then you really do not know what you are missing. That same carnival atmosphere that everybody loves, it's still there, but it's definitely taken to a whole other level. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, I hope that you will like and subscribe and maybe comment with what you think about Celebration or Mardi Gras, which is a similar ship. For more advice and information and tips, you can always visit cruisely.com. And until next time, happy sailing.